Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Maggie. I was a professional MCAT tutor and now I'm a med student. Today we're adding on to the series where we go through the AAMC FLE5 or the, the new free practice exam that came out last year. And I'm taking you through the passage six of the biochem section. So this is a short one, so let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so like I said, this is a really short passage and there actually did not supply any like title to it or anything, but let's just go ahead and get into it. Two theories of membrane structure are discussed below. Okay, unit membrane model. Phospholipid molecules are the most abundant type of lipids in cell membranes. Each consists of a nonpolar hydrophobic tail and a polar hydrophilic head. Here's some sciences they could ask on. The phospholipid chains orient themselves to form a bilayer with the tails pointed inward and the hydrophilic heads lined up on the sides of the bilayer. So I think we actually, me and John did a video way back when on the plasma membrane and I looked back and it was like 45 minutes long <laughs> and it was also like terrible quality because we like barely had mics. I was recording on my phone and we did like a zoom recording. This channel has come so far truly. So you can go give that a watch if you want. We have gotten some comments telling us that those recordings are insufferable and honestly I agree. But anyway if you're not familiar this is the typical structure of a, the phospholipid bilayer. These are your hydrophilic heads on either side and then the hydrophilic uh, tails on the inside. An extended monomolecular layer of protein coats both the outside of the membrane and the inside of the bilayer but the protein does not penetrate the bilayer. Okay so they're saying that we got proteins out here but they do not go into this bilayer. When thin slices of membrane were examined with an electron microscope, three layers were seen, two electron dense layers and one wider layer between them. It was believed that the electron dense layers represented proteins and the lighter area represented lipids. So I guess electron dense areas, two of them, and then on the inside you have that a wide layer between them. Okay, so pretty simple. On to fluid mosaic model. And if you're not familiar, this is the currently accepted model for the plasma membrane. The structure of the fluid mosaic membrane is a bilayer of phospholipid molecules with proteins inserted into the bilayer. So similar to this, but they're saying that these proteins are actually like have little stems that insert into the bilayer. Hydrophilic regions of both the lipids and proteins are found on the outside surface, while the hydrophobic regions of both types of molecules are found on the inside surface. So that's something new. They're saying that there is a hydrophobic region to these proteins and that's what's kind of inserted here on the inside. Because lipids are not fixed rigidly in the membrane, the membrane is capable of fluid movement, hence fluid mosaic model. The theory that proteins penetrate the lipid layer is supported when membranes are split along the middle of the lipid layer. Okay. When the top half is peeled back, small bumps can be seen on the remaining surface. These are assumed to be proteins. So pretty straightforward passage, just kind of um, explaining like the two different theories of the plasma membrane, kind of the older, the old bull and the young calf. Nothing crazy. We can go ahead and get into the questions. So this is number 33. How does the unit membrane model differ from the fluid mosaic model? So let's think about this. Think about it in your head before you go into the answer choices. What's the big difference between these two models that is described in the passage? I know there are other differences. The big thing are these protein tails, that there are proteins, hydrophilic regions of proteins that are inserted into the bilayer. That's the fluid mosaic model. Whereas the unit membrane model just said that they were sitting on either side. So A says the location of proteins differs in the two models. Okay. Partly, right? Like they both said that proteins were out here on the outside, but also like this portion of the protein, like its location or even its existence is only stated in the fluid mosaic model. So I can sort of get behind that, maybe. B says the unit membrane model has a monomolecular layer of protein on each surface. That's true, right? Because we were told this. While the fluid mosaic model has a bimolecular layer of protein on each surface. So that's not true. And we were not told that in the passage. But you might get confused because it is talking about protein. And it is talking about the difference in the proteins between the two models, which is the big thing. But it's not necessarily that there's a bimolecular layer. I'm taking that to mean like two layers of proteins, perhaps. It's that there's a difference in how far these proteins extend into this layer or this hydrophilic layer or hydrophobic layer. So I'm not liking that one. I don't like it as well as A, but I'll still put a maybe beside it because it is talking about proteins. C says the unit membrane model has one layer of phospholipids while the fluid mosaic model has two layers. They both had two layers, right? So that's mark out. D says the unit membrane model contains dissolved protein while the fluid mosaic model is coated with a monomolecular layer of protein on each surface. So that monomolecular layer of protein on each surface was one thing that was specific said for the unit membrane model and neither one of them really talked about dissolved protein. I'm not really sure what they're trying to get at there. I don't know if they're trying to get at the part of the protein that's in the lipid bilayer. But regardless, even if that is what they're talking about, they have the, these models switched backwards, right? So between A and B, how do we pick? Well, we don't have any evidence to say that this bimolecular layer of protein exists in the fluid mosaic model. But we do know that at least partially the location of proteins differs in the two models. 
So I think A is going to be our best answer here. Number 34 says, which of the following observations would invalidate the unit membrane model? Okay, so this is the old bull. This is the one that was talking about how the proteins are just on this either surface, right? And we're trying to find something that invalidates that and likely it's going to validate the fluid mosaic model. So I'm going to have my ears kind of listening out for something along the lines of they found proteins in the hydrophobic layer. A, when a thin section of membrane is observed using a microscope at high magnification, two layers of phospholipid heads are observed. Does the unit membrane model say that? Yes. So that would not invalidate. That would validate. So not that one. Thermodynamic measurements indicate that the phospholipid heads are exposed to water. So the phospholipid heads are the hydrophilic portions of the bilayer and we know that they're exposed to water, you know, hydrophilic water loving, all that, that just validates it. That is known. That doesn't do anything to the unit membrane model. C, when a membrane is frozen and then split from surface to surface, proteins are observed within the hydrocarbon chains. Boom. That's what we want to hear, right? Because the big thing with the unit membrane model is that there are no proteins within that hydrocarbon chain, the hydrophobic, the inside of the phospholipid bilayer. So I definitely like that one. I'll put a little squiggly by it. D, thermodynamic measurements indicate that the phospholipid tails are hidden inside the membrane away from exposure to water. So this is kind of like saying the same thing as B, but opposite. Like we know that the phospholipid tails, which are the hydrophobic parts, are inside the membrane away from exposure to water. So that's not right. C is going to be the one that uh, points towards the fluid mosaic model not towards the unit membrane model. So it is invalidating the unit membrane model. 35, if the small bumps seen when half of the membrane is peeled away were chemically shown to consist of the lipid cholesterol, ooh, how would the fluid mosaic model have to be modified? So up here when we were talking about the fluid mosaic models, it specifically said that those small bumps are assumed to be proteins. So basically, if they're not proteins and they're cholesterol instead, which is lipid, how would that change things? Let me ask you something. Would it completely obliterate what the fluid mosaic model is saying? Probably not. Yes, those small bumps are now known to be cholesterol, but there could still be proteins within the hydrophobic region of the membrane. It's just not the small bumps. So A says the proteins would have to be embedded less than halfway through the membrane. This is such an MCAT answer choice and it's like, what does that even mean? I mean, maybe if we're trying to say like that, that like you cut right in the half and so they would have to be like less, I mean, maybe? That's kind of weird though because we're, we know that like transmembrane proteins, they go all the way through. We know that those exist. This is just interesting. I'm going to come back to it. I'll put a maybe by it. B, there could be no proteins in the membrane. Not really, right? Because like that's what we were talking about earlier. Like, okay, now that the small little bumps are cholesterol, but there could still be proteins in there. They were just not visualized with whatever they were using. So that is too radical of an answer choice. C says the lipids would have to be embedded in the proteins. I guess maybe it's talking about the cholesterol would have to be embedded in the proteins, but I don't think necessarily that that that's kind of like a, a leap because if this lipid cholesterol is within the hydro phobic part of the membrane, why would it necessarily need to be embedded in the proteins or why would it even have to do with the proteins at all? It probably wouldn't. I don't really like that answer choice because it doesn't make any sense. Usually proteins and lipids are not interacting like a whole, whole lot. At least the hydrophilic part of the protein would not be interacting with the lipids that much. So I just don't love that answer choice. I think A is honestly better. D, it would not necessarily have to be altered, but there would be less evidence supporting it. So this, I really like this. And I like it because this was their evidence that these small bumps um, were seen on the surface when they peeled it back and that they were assumed to be proteins. So when you take that away, you don't necessarily have to change this. It's just now you've gotten rid of this evidence. So this is kind of one of those questions that is bordering on a research methods question. And if you're asking, Maggie, how did you mark off A? It's because I liked D and I really didn't like A. I don't like the way it's worded. I don't really understand what it's saying and D makes sense. The last question, number 36 says, which of the following is a weakness in the unit membrane model? So probably what this is gonna focus on is the big difference between the unit membrane and the fluid mosaic model, which is whether or not proteins enter into the hydrophobic layer of the plasma membrane. So A says the unit membrane model does not define the cell size. Uh, we have not talked about the cell size at all, and that doesn't even make any sense. B, the unit membrane model does not suggest how the exchange of nutrients and wastes occurs. Okay, think about this. When I think about what are some of the biggest things that have to get across the cell membrane, I think of things like glucose. That's a very polar molecule, right? Well, a polar molecule is not going to be 
able to get across that big, thick hydrophobic layer of the plasma membrane. That's why we have like transmembrane proteins and stuff like that. So that is a big, huge reason why the unit membrane model should not be trusted. Because how are we getting glucose in otherwise? So I like B. C says the unit membrane model does not act as a barrier between the contents of the cell and the cell's external environment. I think it would very well do that. In fact, um, just what we were talking about with B, like if nothing is able to get through except for like small nonpolar things, and that would be a pretty good barrier to the outside. So C is not correct. It would definitely be a good barrier. D says the hydrocarbon bilayer allows passage of polar molecules through the membrane. This tripped me up because to me, I was like, oh, that's a more concise way of saying what B is saying, but it's not right. So let's look at why it's not right. And I think that this is like one of those annoying test taking strategies that's going to take you really far for a little tricky test like the MCAT. A, B, and C all start out with the unit membrane model does not blah, blah, blah. D says the hydrocarbon bilayer, like it doesn't start out like that. So if we're looking at the question as specifically, which of the following is a weakness in the unit membrane model? If you immediately say the hydrocarbon bilayer allows passage of polar molecules through the membrane, well, that's not something that the unit membrane model says. Yeah, I know y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but I think if it said the unit membrane model does not explain how the hydrocarbon bilayer allows passage of polar molecules through the membrane, I think that would be the perfect answer. But instead, it doesn't say that. It does not have this little part right here that says the unit membrane model does not. So we need to probably assume that this is saying the unit membrane model does explain how the hydrocarbon bilayer, blah, blah, blah. So this would actually, unfortunately, be like the opposite. So B is actually like the best answer here. And it is strictly because of the way it is worded. But I think that you should get between B and D because they're saying similar things. I know that it doesn't specifically say that these nutrients and wastes are polar. And so we don't like the way it's worded as much. But if you think about just some common nutrients and wastes, like, like I said, glucose, like that's such a common one that has to get across the plasma membrane. Then in when you say nutrients and waste, you were talking about polar things as well. So B is our best answer here. D is worded incorrectly. Okay, so that was passage six in the FLE5 on the AMC website. I hope it made it make a little bit more sense. But if you're like, this was an easy one, I want to see harder ones, don't worry, we're going to get through the whole test. As always, hit like, subscribe to our channel if you are studying for the MCAT or know someone who is, and leave a comment down below of what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.